The way of the samurai is found in death. If by setting one's heart right every morning and evening, one is able to live as though his body were already dead, he gains freedom in the way. His whole life will be without blame, and he will succeed with his calling. This quote is from a 17th century samurai, Yamamoto Sunetomo, who after experiencing the death of his master, retired to live in the mountains as a Buddhist priest. His teachings were compiled into a book called Hagakure, offering insights into proper conduct for samurais, and he was heavily influenced by the Zen Buddhist and Confucian traditions. Now, Sunetomo had some fascinating teachings, and although they contrast heavily with modern Western ideals and norms, they still provide very relevant insights into self-improvement, discipline, and mindset. Death featured as a central part in Sunetomo's philosophy, so in this video, we're going to delve into his teachings on overcoming fear of death in order to obtain freedom and unlock one's full potential. Sunetomo taught that in order to be a good samurai, one has to be prepared to die at any moment. For samurai, this fearlessness was vital in fulfilling their duty to serve their master, even at the cost of certain death, whether that be on the battlefield or in seeking revenge. When one can overcome their fear and live as though already dead, they will be liberated and far more likely to succeed, as they are not held back by a desire to preserve themselves. This allows truly free thought and action. Now to understand the next layer of this quote from Sunetomo, we have to understand his Zen Buddhist influence. Now Zen actually appealed a lot to warriors at the time because of its emphasis on self-reliance and self-discipline, which many people today might find quite surprising considering a lot of people associate Buddhism with hippies and passivity. But as we'll see, Sunetomo really emphasizes the utility that meditative practice has for warriors to excel in battle. Now Zen teaches that our constant fixation on the self actually limits our freedom. We perceive ourselves as these distinct entities from the rest of the world and are constantly preoccupied with maintaining and upholding our physical and psychological integrity. The world becomes bifurcated into on the one side the me and the my and on the other side the rest of the environment. This self fixation obstructs clear thought and action, especially for samurai who must act swiftly and decisively in service of their duty rather than in service of goals like self preservation. Zen claims that the sense of a distinct and enduring self is actually an illusion that's constantly being nourished by our memory, our five senses, and by culture. Through disciplined meditation, one can shatter this illusion and experience what's known as the Great Death, the profound realization of the non-existence of the self, which is supposed to give us true freedom. Thus, part of the meaning of Sunetomo's original quote actually resides in this principle from Zen. To find the way of the samurai in death means to dissolve one's ego and experience the unreality of the self, which Sunetomo tells us can be done through careful meditation in both the morning and the evening. When one achieves this, they can be unimpeded by self-preservation and fleeting desires, and wholly committed to their duty as a samurai. Now, of course, the quote also has a more literal meaning to it. The duty of the samurai demands that he be ready to die at any time, and to die with courage is an intrinsic good for a samurai. Now of course, as is common in the Zen tradition, meditative practice plays a crucial role in Sunetomo's advocacy for how we actually go about achieving this mental state. Meditation on inevitable death should be performed daily. Every day when one's body and mind are at peace, one should meditate upon being ripped apart by arrows, rifles, spears and swords, being carried away by surging waves, being thrown into the midst of a great fire, being struck by lightning, being shaken to death by a great earthquake, falling from a thousand foot cliffs, dying of disease or committing seppuku at the death of one's master, and every day without fail one should consider himself as dead. Now we can see already that Sunetomo's teachings have a stark contrast to how we typically think in the modern Western world. In the West we have a hyper-individualistic model, and self-preservation and one's own desires are typically thought to be the highest good, certainly put far above things like duty, honour, or let alone dying for the service of others. After all, what could be more important than my own life and my own desires? Clearly, we're very much in the grasp of what a Zen Buddhist would say is an illusion of the self. To Sunetomo, a samurai should be indifferent to his death and wholly committed to the virtues of being a samurai, loyalty, honour and courage. If one exemplifies these, then one has achieved the good even if one dies in the process. 
we can see this idea being expressed in this following quote. Victory and defeat are matters of the temporary force of circumstances. The way of avoiding shame is different. It is simply in death. Even if it seems certain that you will lose, retaliate. Neither wisdom nor technique has a place in this. A real man does not think of victory or defeat. He plunges recklessly towards an irrational death. By doing this, you awaken from your dreams. Now, in terms of applying these teachings to modern life outside of samurai culture, of course, most people aren't going to need to rush to a certain death in battle. But I still think there's utility to the idea that a fear of death or fear of suffering can hold us back in life significantly. If we were truly able to be prepared for death without any anxiety, then we would have overcome a significant psychological burden. And if we apply his ideas to fear of negative outcomes more, more generally, then they become even more relevant. The fear of death is often symbolic of our broader fears of negative outcomes and failure. When we overcome our fear of death, we simultaneously learn to conquer our other fears associated with uncertainty, risk and adversity. This fearless mindset allows us to take calculated risks and pursue our goals in a more bold fashion. The mindset shift advocated by Sunetamore's philosophy is about recognizing the impermanence of life and seizing the present moment. Now, I actually believe that modern life makes these teachings especially relevant for many people. We live in an unprecedented era of luxury, comfort, convenience, and safety, and we have limitless options for entertainment at our fingertips. Yet despite this, many of us find ourselves in monotonous routines and feeling a lack of fulfillment. Familiar routines of attending school, university or a 9-to-5 office job, then returning home to spend the evening on a digital screen, can create a kind of self-imposed comfort zone. Whilst this is very enticing in the short term, it can deprive us of the fulfillment that comes from risk and adventure. Modern life with its emphasis on safety and predictability has diminished our opportunity to experience things that push our boundaries and ignite that fire of ambition. Whilst most people are not grappling with hesitation to die in battle, many people are in fact crippled by fear of bad outcomes and this prevents them from taking opportunities as a result. Now this could be fear of rejection, fear of being a social outcast, fear of financial losses, fear of a difficult confrontation. All of these things are very common in the modern human experience and it's uncontroversial to say that they many times hold us back. With this in mind, Sunetamon's teachings and ideas from the Zen tradition suddenly become very relevant. If you can forge your mind to be strong enough to overcome fear of death, then you can certainly overcome fear of any of the sorts of fears we have in the modern world. You can overcome your fear of talking to someone that you want to date, your fear of asking for a raise, your fear of going through with a difficult confrontation. Whatever it is, if we apply the teachings, discipline and meditative practices that Sunetamore advocates, then we can certainly conquer those sorts of things that we often miss out on. His teachings remind us that life isn't just about living comfortably, but also about achieving greatness and learning to seize the moment. If we overcome these common fears of death or of bad outcomes, then we can have a spirit of daring, which will allow us to seize many of life's greatest experiences. Many of the greatest experiences and achievements that life has to offer definitely lie outside of our bubble of comfort. So with that, I'll wrap up this video, but stay tuned because I'll be posting another video about the more broad teachings by Sunetamar later on this week. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.